Okay, welcome to uh, class meeting two of the EC uh, 5695H uh, Introduction to Optimization Theory. Uh, first, I have two announcements. First is that the, uh, the uh, PDF notice uploaded uh, on the course webpage and also uh, the video lecture is available. Uh, I'll try my best to upload the video lectures as soon as possible after the uh, class meeting is over. Got it? Okay. So uh, to those students who are not yet familiar with the course homepage, you go to my lab homepage and you click teaching. And here in the first semester, uh, as I told you, the number is 589, actually which, uh, this number, uh, the course with this number does not exist, but anyway, this is the, the course. So if you click it, and you will see the syllabus, and here if you click schedule download, then uh, as I told you, uh, MP4 format and uh, other streaming format is available. Actually, these two uh, functions are almost the same, depending on the setting of your computer, uh, for the uh, video player. Okay. I do not uh, recommend you to download the, uh, the entire video in the case it, my computer is overloaded. So my suggestion is to uh, you, you view this uh, as a streaming. Okay. Uh, probably if you have Windows Media Player, then if you click this one, then uh, the streaming will start. Got it? If you have iPhone, probably you have to push this one to have a stream. Okay. Uh, the, these are not password uh, protected, but uh, these lecture notes are all password protected. As I told you, since uh, this is uh, the uh, note for the uh, second lecture, so as you see that uh, probably chapter two, chapter two something, so the password is TWO. Got it? Okay, so if you have difficulty in accessing this PDF files, please let me know. Anyway, uh, today we are going to uh, start by reviewing what we uh, learned uh, last time. So first, we need to classify these optimization problems we are going to study. As I told you, we are not going to study every possible format of optimization problems. We will study some of them, but this this set of problems is large enough to contain most of the problems we are interested in. So first question is this. Uh, what is to be found by solving this uh, optimization problem? What is to be found? This is a very important question because uh, when we do optimization, we want to find the best something. Okay? It may be a best spouse, <laughs> best girlfriend, Okay. or uh, best advisor, right? or best friend uh, with whom you always go to lunch. Okay. So uh, there could be uh, many, many different uh, classes of optimization problems depending on what you are going to find. But in this mathematical optimization problems, uh, what is to be found are very restricted. These are restricted to, for example, scalars, or a scala, or a vector, or a matrix, sequence sometimes, periodic or non-periodic, or sometimes uh, continuous time waveform, and others. Among these uh, possible uh, targets to be found, uh, we are interested in uh, finding best uh, vector, okay, in some sense. Especially uh, this vector in this course has, for example, n entries where each ith entry is a real number. Of course, for electrical engineers, it is very important to optimize some vector containing complex values. However, this course uh, intentionally eliminates the problems with uh, complex values. Uh, in many cases, uh, the algorithms are almost the same. But you have to remember, in some cases, it's very different. 
and you should pay much attention. Otherwise, you will make a serious mistake. Okay. So whenever you handle complex value the, vector, uh, the, uh, the vector optimization with complex entries, be careful. Okay. By the way, uh, it seems I'm talking too much, but there is called Wartinga calculus. Okay. Related to uh, the differentiation of real valued function with complex valued arguments. Okay. So anyway, remember this. Okay. Let's, let's uh, kind of make our mouse be uh, acquainted with Wartinga calculus. Please repeat. Wartinga calculus. Yeah. So whenever you confront some new terminology, if there is no one around you, murmur it. Okay? Please murmur. Then your neurons will kind of arrange the firing sequence of your muscles. And if you repeat several times, then after that day, you can naturally use this terminology. For example, like, hey, Professor Joe talked about what thing you Have you ever heard it? If you have murmured this terminology several times, then you can do. But if you just watch using your eyeballs and do not use your muscles, uh, then it's like, ah, he, he mentioned something, right? But then you have a serious problem. So uh, make it a, a habit of a kind of murmuring when <laughs> no one is there uh, about what uh, the terminologies you learned. Anyway, you remember this one, even though you have no idea what it is. Okay. Someday you will need. Okay. If you cannot find any material, send me an email. I will provide you a good uh, uh, reference. Anyway, so uh, in this course, we want to find some best real valued vector. Okay. And in the optimization problem, we call such a, a vector, in this case, is called uh, as uh, decision decision variable if it is a scalar sometimes this vector as a collection uh, you say this vector is a decision variable but sometimes you say each entries of this vector is a decision variable so you have decision variables Sometimes your problem is a design problem, so sometimes you say that the design variable or uh, sometimes uh, c your problem is an optimal control problem, so you say control variables. But also you say uh, instead of uh, variables, uh, you use parameters. So uh, throughout this course, sometimes I will say that let's find the optimal decision variable. Sometimes I will say optimal decision parameter. Or I say uh, let's find the optimal uh, decision vector or something. Optimal parameter, optimal vector. Okay? But anyway, all of these uh, refer to this vector to be found by solving our optimization problem. Now. Of course, I, I, I talked about some uh, uh, optimization problem, very famous, uh, a very famous optimization problem named the Brachistochrome problem last time, right? You have a, a slope to be designed so that the, the sliding ball reaches end point uh, after the minimum time elapsed, something like that. Okay. But anyway, that is not our interest in this course, fortunately. <laughs> okay. So second one, whenever we confront some optimization problem, uh, so, so we have decided which, uh, what to find, right? Random, uh, some, some vector in this case, some deterministic uh, uh, vector. But for example, in your search for a, a girlfriend, uh, uh, probably you uh, you have a constraint. Okay, you cannot search for every girl ever existed uh, on Earth, right? Probably you want to find your peer, especially who are around this campus, right? So whenever you do optimization, you have a so-called constraint set. So you want to find the vector x that is 
a, a, a member of a set. Okay? This set is called uh, a constraint set or a feasible, feasible set or sometimes a search space. It has many names depending on the person who talk about optimization problem. I, I may say that, okay, the search space is n-dimensional uh, uh, Euclidean space. What does that mean? Our x is a vector with n entries, and each x can be any real number. Okay. By the way, since as I told you, our interest uh, is only on finding an optimal vector, probably this constraint set is a subset of some r to the n. The notation uh, r to the n means what? n-dimensional real Euclidean space. Okay. Sometimes I would say r to the n times 1, but uh, they are the same. Okay. Now, uh, let's talk about what, more about this constraint set. Sometimes this constraint set is a countable set. What does that mean? In your search for a good girlfriend, right, your search space has countable number of elements. You, 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 you can give, uh, give a natural number to each uh, member of the constraint set. Okay, number one, number two, number three. And then you can assign every number or some of the numbers without repetition okay, to the members of the entry, the members of the constraint set. Then the constraint set is called what? A discrete set. Okay. So omega, the constraint set can be a uh, sorry, 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 finite countable set. It could be countable, which includes finite. Okay, include the finite set. Or it could be uncountable. As I told you last time in the first meeting, depending on the character of this constraint set, our optimization problem becomes very, very different. When this set of the candidates, okay, by the way, if x that uh, if you have a, a vector x that is a member of r to the n, but not a member of this constraint set, then that x is called infeasible. Okay, so you have to know a lot of terms. Feasible means feasible means your candidate is inside the constraint set. Otherwise, it's called infeasible. That's why this constraint set or such space is also called a feasible set. Got it? So, uh, when the, uh, the feasible set is a countable set, we call the optimization problems as discrete optimization problems. It's similar to uh, the notion of discrete random variable. For example, uh, we observe the outcome of our uh, uh, rolling a dice. Rolling a dice, what happens? Then we observe either one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? And that va value, if it is modeled as a random variable, we call it a discrete random variable. Very similar, okay? So set is countable, means we have a discrete optimization problem. If the set has uncountable number of feasible, feasible uh, solution, okay? then our problem is continuous uh, optimization problem. So this gives you discrete optimization problem. This gives you continuous optimization problem. And also, I told you there are uh, very important problems, very, very practical problems that has some of this, this vector, some entries of this vector from a discrete set and some the, uh, from a continuous set. 
In that case, we call the problem as a mixed optimization problem. And I have given you an example. I, I confronted as a senior undergraduate student to uh, write my uh, thesis on uh, induction motor design software. Okay. There were the problem was what? That I could not uh, arbitrarily choose the size or diameter of a wire okay, because uh, only the uh, standard uh, products are available. So in that case, uh, some of your parameters can be arbitrarily chosen, but some are only from this uh, finite set. Okay. Uh, in this course, we only uh, have interest in this continuous optimization. So you have to remember that. Uh, this is our focus. However, as I repeatedly told you last time, these are also very important. And especially discrete optimization problems, apparently it seems easier than continuous optimizations. But in many cases, the algorithms to find the optimal or suboptimal uh, or near optimal solutions in discrete optimization problems requires exponential complexity. So uh, even in this modern world of computers, discrete optimization problems are, in general, uh, much more difficult. Uh, for continuous optimization problems, we do not just have continuum for our uh, constraint set, but uh, I will just talk about the uh, uh, objective function where our uh, optimization problems have differentiable uh, objective functions in most of cases. So we can use the uh, strong power of uh, multivariate calculus uh, in our optimization problem solving. Okay. okay, so second one was related to this constraint set. Okay. The third one uh, is, uh, by the way, uh, one of the important subclass of discrete optimization problems is called integer programming problem. Where uh, our solution must have integer valued entries. Okay, okay. now uh, whenever we talk about optimality, we need optimality criteria. For example, uh, suppose one of you uh, in your girlfriend searching problem have a criterion that uh, I want my girlfriend as tall as possible. In that case, the height is what? Is the objective function. Okay? So if you plug in different feasible solution, then you have different value. And you want to maximize the height. Or you uh, may want to uh, optimize some other uh, function of the uh, the member. In that case, uh, this optimality criterion uh, is one of the most important things to be decided before you solve the problem. So usually what we do is that uh, we adopt a function that is from, of course, the constraint set to The, a kind of a subset of real numbers. So what is this? This is a real value function. What is good with real value function? If you plug in some uh, vector from omega, say uh, x1, and if you plug in some other feasible uh, solution, here Feasible solution does not mean the solution of the optimization problem. Feasible solution, a feasible solution means any member of the uh, feasible set. Okay? So a feasible solution x1 and a feasible solution x2 can be optimal solution or not. But what is good with this real value function is that you can now what? You can compare which one is smaller or which one is greater. Okay? If this uh, function is complex valued, we can't do that in general without devising some way to uh, uh, measure the size. 
Okay. So sometimes you have this inequality or this kind of inequality or uh, the inequality flipped or sometimes equality. Okay. So uh, what we do is that we adopt a function and uh, the argument of the function is from this constraint set. So whenever you choose uh, one feasible solution and plug into your function, you have a real value. You choose another feasible solution, plug in, you have another value. So by comparing these two values, you can check which one is better. Okay. But this better uh, may mean different things. For example, the better may mean in your problem, this value is smaller or vice versa. But in standard form, uh, we usually minimize this uh, function. By the way, this function is also has a name. Uh, this function is called uh, the objective function. Or sometimes it's called cost function. Especially when it is called a cost function, you want to really minimize uh, this function. What does that mean? You want to find a feasible solution that achieves the minimum value of this function. Of course, these feasible uh, solutions are only from the uh, feasible set or such space. The problem is that uh, uh, there are two types of problems, uh, optimization problems related to this uh, objective function. Sometimes your optimization problem has only one objective function but sometimes it may have more than one. Okay. So depending on the number of objective functions, you divide, you classify the optimization problems as a single objective optimization problem or uh, multi or multiple multi objective optimization problem. And I emphasize that in this course, we only have interest in studying single objective optimization problems, but it is also very important to know the existence of such other sets of class of problems. And for example, in your multi-user information theory, where, for example, two users compete in sharing communication channel to send their individual information to, for example, a base station. In that case, probably if this transmitter wants to increase the transmission rate, which means that if this transmitter wants to utilize more of this channel, probably this user may not send trans, uh, data bits as fast as possible. So there is a trade-off, right? But this base station may view this transmission rate and this transmission rate as two objective functions. In that case, what will happen? Probably the base station will plot this type of uh, uh, 2D rate pair plane and find some reason like this and may say that okay so this say that this is point 0.1 and this is point 0.5 then point 0.5 bits per second for the first user and 2 bits per second bit per second for uh, the second user is achievable by using some optimized system but if that point is here, probably he will say that, oh, why don't we push this way or design some other system that performs here or any points here or at the boundary of uh, this reason, something like that. So in this way, he also talk about which one is worse than uh, which other sol which solution. Of course, when you have two uh, systems, one operating here, the other operating here, then it may be difficult to compare these two. 
but uh, if you have two systems working here and here or here and here, then you can do compress something like that. Okay, and this is all related to what uh, the uh, economics. So in your undergraduate program, uh, probably at the last chapter or second to last chapter, you've seen one chapter dedicated to game theory, not related to any Blizzard's uh, computer games. And second one is all related to product optimality and Nash equilibrium, blah, blah, blah. Okay? So th th those problems are related to multi-objective optimization problems, but we are not interested in them. Okay. We still need uh, to pay more attention, but uh, let me uh, give you a standard form of optimization problem. Uh, so we are interested in a single objective optimization problem. It also may have uh, maybe put in uh, different forms, but uh, we call this uh, the standard form. So you have to remember, by the way, it consists of three elements. This standard form consists of three elements. As I already told you, first, we, uh, so the form is like this, minimize over x, okay? Of this objective function subject to this constraint. So, see, first you have what? The decision parameter, right? This is the first element of this standard form. Second, you have this objective function. That is the second element. Third one is this constraint set or feasible set or such space. Okay. So, uh, this standard form consists of three elements. And depending on how they differ, the uh, problem uh, changes. As I told you, we can choose maximization, but whenever you have maximization of some g of x, you can turn it to minimization of minus g of x. So the standard form has um, minimization only. Sometimes this standard form is written uh, like this, mean dot f of x, x s dot t dot x in mm -hmm. As I told you in mathematics, s dot t dot may mean such that, but in optimization problem in the standard form, this means subject to. But still, many people say such that. So it's okay. But uh, originally, it means subject to. And I emphasize the uh, kind of importance of this dot for some picky uh, researchers. This uh, means that this mean is not the minimum. It's the abbreviation of minimize, okay? But uh, it, it's not that important for some person. So this is another form. And you may write this way, of course. Uh, right? So just dropping this period and just putting this constraint here. Okay? So they are all the same. Okay? But still you have to be careful uh, in the following cases. Okay? So suppose you have found uh, the optimal solution okay. that minimizes this value and uh, the vector is in the constraint set. In that case, if this mean really means minimum, okay, you have to say that this equals f of x star, okay, where uh, x star is an optimal solution. Okay? This is not mean dot, right? 
because minimize does not return anything to you. Okay? But this min returns you the minimum value of this f of x. Got it? Okay. What if you really want to uh, denote this x star? In that case, you use this arc min f of x, x in the constraints. Got it? So arg means that argument. What is the argument? This thing of the objective function or any function. Okay. So you want to find the argument that minimizes this function. And this x is in the constraint set. So x star is the argument. Got it? The problem is that here, some of you already noticed that I said unoptimal solution. Why? Because there may be more than one solution given an optimization problem. Okay. So actually, if you write this way, uh, you mean that the solution is unique. Otherwise, it may not make sense this thing. Okay. So this uh, assumes uniqueness. the uniqueness of the solution. So naturally, uh, I move to talk about the uh, existence and uniqueness of the, uh, uh, optimi the solution of the optimization problem. So suppose you are given uh, an optimization problem Mini, minimize f of x over x subject to x in the constraints. Now, given an optimization problem, in this case, single objective optimization problem, the optimal solution, an optimal solution, an optimal solution, what does that mean? x star is optimal means that f of x star is less than or equal to f of x for all x in the constraint set, right? So suppose that your one of your vector uh, minimizes this one, say value, value is 5. But you have another vector that achieves the same value. In that case, you have to say that solution exists and more than one. Okay. But sometimes, such x star may not exist inside this constraint set. For example, suppose you have uh, the simple scalar case f of x equals x squared. And your constraint set means that x is greater than 1 and less than 2. Then as you learned in high school math, there is no solution. If 1 What's inside, what the inside this constraint set? You may say that x equals 1 is the minimizer. But as I just told you, omega does not include 1. So given an optimization problem, you have to remember this. Solution may not exist. Uh, it's a bad news in searching for your girlfriend, right? Solution may not exist. <laughs> Let me give you a, a, a good news then. If you change the constraint set, it may exist, <laughs> right? So uh, if you have difficulty in finding the optimal solution, re-examine your constraint set and your objective function. That sometimes solves, resolves your problem, got it? Anyway, so an optimal solution may not exist. So this is related to the existence of an optimal solution. And even if it exists, it may not be unique. unique. This is related to the uniqueness of your solution. Got it? So this is very important. Some optimization problems does not have any optimal solution. Some problems have more than uh, one sol optimal solutions. So, uh, here goes the notions you have to remember. Okay. By the way, uh, if 
x star satisfies this one. x star is called, of course, unoptimal solution to the optimization problem. And it's co also called in this minimization problem. It's a minimizer. Okay, because it minimizes the objective function. And also, it is called a global uh, minimizer. And you may say that, oh, this minimizer, then why we need this quantifier? Because in many cases, even if you know the optimal solution exists, and you know there are, for example, more than one optimal solutions, sometimes it may be impossible to find the, any optimal solution within uh, your resource, computation time or something. In that case, we have to go with a suboptimal solution, right? And suboptimal solution may be an, a global minimizer if you hugely restrict your search space. So within a small area, small search space, that, so that feasible solution may be a global minimizer. In that case, we call it a local minimizer of the original problem. That's why uh, we introduced this term global. Okay. So, now you become uh, aware of solving an optimization problem can be very, very nasty. It's like you cannot find a solution. You can find a compromise solution in many cases. Like, good enough. Okay. Yeah, that's not a good news, but in many engineering problems, if you find some some optimal solution, you may show that it is very close to optimal solution. How? For example, you evaluate, you evaluate this objective function with that suboptimal solution, and you have some number. Now you know that this number cannot be lower than some very some some number that is very close to this one, and difference is meaningless in the engineering sense. In that case, you don't need to search for more because usually in optimization problems, we do not include the computation time or our resource. But in many cases, this, how to say, some non-mathematical quantity, our effort, may be one of the most important resources we have to consider in our constraint set. So in many cases, we just say that, okay, good enough. Okay? So, Never forget. Finding a global minimizer is the best case. However, in many cases, we are satisfied a suboptimal solution. And in many cases, that would be better if it is a local minimizer. What does that mean? In many cases, we just go with some non-local minimizer. We know that if I spend two more minutes, I can find a better one than the feasible solution, but I stop. If that happens. So, sometimes your optimal solution can be found in a closed form. It's like uh, your solution, given the uh, uh, given a problem, equals something. Period. Okay. Using in terms of elementary functions, but sometimes. Uh, you do not have a, a solution in a closed form, but you have a, a closed algorithmic solution. Closed. What does that mean? If you use some procedure, it is guaranteed that you find the optimal solution. But uh, I cannot give you a, a closed form in terms of elementary functions. Okay, I can't do that. But uh, I can give you an uh, algorithmic solution. Or sometimes I give you some iterative algorithm that 
gives you a better and better and better solution or no worse solution whenever you iterate. However, the convergence of the uh, solution, the sequence of feasible solutions to an optimal solution is not guaranteed, something like that. For example, this is uh, uh, this includes uh, the famous uh, expectation maximization algorithm. Okay, so this optimal means a lot. Okay, so uh, the x star that minimizes this uh, objective function is called uh, minimizer or optimal solution, and. Uh, there is some confusing uh, convention say that we say that we optimize x we optimize x it makes sense right we want to for example design a waveform for 5G cellular system and probably I may say that I am optimizing my waveform right but Actually, what you do is that you formulate an optimization problem, which means that even though you search for a waveform, you want to, for example, minimize the mean squared error in your uh, symbol estimation. So actually, what you do is that you optimize the mean squared error. Okay. So sometimes, uh, given an optimization problem, we say that we optimize the objective function. Because this makes sense, because anyway, we minimize this objective function, right? Actually, objective function value. So sometimes we say that we, find, we optimize the, uh, the decision parameter. Sometimes we optimize the objective function. But it's OK. But if you want to be precise, okay, we optimize decision parameter or variable by minimizing the objective function. Okay? That is the precise, uh, that would be the precise statement. Okay? But uh, you don't need to that picky. Okay. Now, uh, what to do? Okay. So given the standard form optimization problem, there are uncountably infinite number of different uh, problems, optimization problems. And as you did in signal and systems, what we do is the same. We classify, partition this uh, uh, collection of optimization problems by uh, grouping that. Okay, you have some commonality. Let me think how to solve this uh, optimization problem in this group. Let me think how to solve uh, the optimization problems in this group, something like that. So, uh, we will see uh, other class, sub-classifications like least square problems, linear programming problems, convex programming problems, quadratic uh, programming problems, something, something, something. Got it? And there, what we do is this. Okay? First, we formulate formulation of a problem. So we start, from, uh, start, we start by formulating an optimization problem. To do that, what? You choose a decision parameter. You choose uh, uh, an objective function. You choose a constraint set. Given the same situation, different engineer may choose different objective function and different constraint set. Depending on the optimality criteria. Okay. Never forget that. There is no unique uh, optimization problem to be solved given a situation. Second, uh, you derive an optimal solution. Here, you have to be careful. In some situation, it is enough to find one optimal solution if an optimal solution exists. But in some cases, you need to find every optimal solution. If you can find, if you have found every optimal solution, in that case, you say that the solution is fully characterized. The optimal solution. The optimal solutions are 
fully characterized. This means you have found every optimal solution. But this is very rare. Okay. But sometimes this is the most important case. Sometimes. Okay. So it really depends on your situation. Currently, my, one of my students is doing some uh, waveform op optimization for, for 5G standardization. There, his objective is to find single, okay, single best waveform. And without knowing whether there may exist uh, more than one optimal waveform. The third one is uh, evaluation of the performance evaluation of the performance of the solution. And you may say that, well, it's too obvious. If I have found the solution, probably I have evaluated the cost function. Right? But actually it is not. Sometimes you have found the optimal solution, even in a closed form, for example. But in order to compute the cost function, okay, Actually, you cannot find that in a closed form. You can only find it, for example, uh, find upper and lower bounds or approximate value. Okay. In some optimization problems, it is just difficult to evaluate the objective function. But strangely, you can still find the optimal solution. Okay. So this is really happens in uh, statistical signal processing. For example, in your communication or control problem, uh, you want to design some electrical system. And uh, you have found an optimal solution, somehow, analytically. But now you want to evaluate, for example, the performance of the system, which happened to be, for example, the mid error rate. And some of you are already exposed to that. Sometimes just computing the exact bit error solution of a system, bit error rate over, uh, over communication system, it's just as difficult as to graduate. <laughs> okay. So what do you do? You, you, you make approximations. Okay. So this part in this course, I do not, I will not much talk about it, but actually it may become a formidable task and also very important in some engineering problems. So uh, please keep in mind that uh, you have three steps in, form, in talking about optimization problems. First, formulation. Okay. Here, your subjective, subjective optimality is highly uh, likely to be included. When you choose an optimality criteria, when you choose a constraint, and even when you choose a decision product. Given the same problem, different engineer may choose a different set of decision variables. Okay. And then, you do your best to derive, for example, every solution or a single solution or many good solutions but not by no means optimal or you develop some algorithm that gives you good enough uh, feasible solution, something like that. And then eventually you have to claim that this solution is very good. So anyway, somehow you have to evaluate the cost function. Okay, and another one is that uh, uh, this is in many cases uh, is not considered and actually very important is that you have found a solution, say that, and evaluate it. Okay, so you formulate it, found the solution, and evaluate it. And you may say that, hmm, I'm done, happy. But the problem is this. In engineering problems, there may be a lot of perturbations. Okay. This may be an error or a perturbation. The problem is that if you slightly change your optimal solution, this value may change a lot. What does that mean? 
your solution, optimal solution is very, very sensitive. Okay? So sometimes your evaluation of the performance must include a sensitivity analysis. This is sometimes very important. Okay? Sometimes. And actually, I also observed uh, in uh, many cases. For example, uh, in our design of some uh, communication algorithm, we assume some channel parameters are known. Okay? Because uh, if we include the estimation problem at the same time in, for example, decoding, then it's too complicated. So what we do mostly is that, OK, under the assumption that the channel coefficients are perfectly known, let me show uh, the performance, BL performance or SEL performance. So my error control code is very good. And now, after you submit and accept, and you, you are happy that because you are a graduate soon, uh, some of your uh, uh, newly joined uh, lab members say that, Hyun, uh, what happens uh, if I slightly uh, change the uh, channel estimate? And you run simulation, uh, OK, OK, I'll try and find that the BR performance is 0.5. Okay. What does that mean? Your system is very, very sensitive. What does that mean? It's useless in practice. Okay. Sometimes that really happens. Okay. So without uh, talking to your uh, advisor, do your sensitivity analysis. Okay. This is very important. But in many cases omitted, I think it's because uh, we engineering schools do not teach optimization really seriously. Okay. If I am a dictator of the world and teach optimization, probably if I am a dictator, I will not teach optimization theory. But if I, I am the only dictator who can teach the optimization, probably I say that you do use, uh, pick, you take these four steps. Okay. Otherwise, you will be executed. And because this is so important, sensitivity analysis is so important in optimization problem. Okay. So for example, suppose you have multiple optimal solutions. One of them is not that sensitive, and the others are all very sensitive. Which one do you want to choose? The, so the optimal solution that is not that sensitive, right? So this is very important in engineering sense. Anyway, never forget, because uh, in academia, sometimes it's okay just without having this one. But in real practical world, if you just omit this step, you may have a big trouble. It may ruin your entire career. Be careful. Okay? This is my uh, most important advice today. Be careful. I want you. Okay. 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 Uh, it seems I, I talked too much and uh, have been too slow. So let me be quick. Okay. So let's quickly uh, browse our lecture note provided by the author. Okay. You will see uh, almost the same uh, things. Okay. Some of them are overlapping with what I have just told you, and some of them does not, but uh, anyway, you need to know. First, optimization means making the best decision. So actually, optimization theory is a part of decision theory. Got it? So game theory is also part of decision theory. Have you know, uh, uh, did you know that? Okay, anyway, uh, an optimization problem occurs in engineering design, management, and every uh, day life. Uh, we focus on choices that involve real numbers. As I told you, we are interested in find real vector that is best. Okay. What does best mean? In our case, best means the objective function value is minimized. Okay. And this single function is a real valued function in our case because we only focus on single objective optimization problem. Okay. And this is also called cost function because we, uh, in the standard form, we minimize. And it's also called objective function. Okay. 
We want to see that minimize f, but sometimes, as I told you, we want to optimize f. But precisely speaking, we optimize x by minimizing f. Got it? Okay. Omega is uh, used as a notation uh, for a feasible set. Okay. Actually, the feasible set of an optimization problem. Okay. So this is the standard single objective optimization problem. Okay. We minimize the objective function. In this case, see that uh, there does not appear x underscore, but I prefer using that because in many optimization problems, this objective function has many arguments other than the objective functions. For example, uh, you have function f of some p vector comma x, where p is a vector of other parameters fixed. Okay? So probably you want to find x in terms of p. Okay? So in that case, you'd better specify x here. But some of them say that anyway, here I have x. Okay? So here, x is the decision parameter, obviously. f is the objective function, and omega is the constraint set. Okay? But sometimes you must be careful. OK, what about maximization? You just take minus f. Okay? Solving optimization problems means sometimes you find every solution. Sometimes you find uh, one of the uh, optimal solutions. Sometimes you solve local minimizes. Sometimes you find some good enough solutions. In a closed form, analytically means that in a closed form or in a semi-closed form, sometimes numerically. By the way, uh, in this era of computers, okay, this numerical solution has become very, very important. When I was a graduate student, it was still a different uh, period. Okay? It's like, given a very complicated solution of, in, of some communication system, if I could solve a closed form okay, solution, then I could graduate. Okay? But if I find some numerical solution, my advice would say that, ah, not good, not uh, high quality research. But these days, we formulate important problems where no closed form solution exists. Okay. Everybody just knows that. Impossible. Okay. In that case, developing an algorithm is very important. Okay. There are many, many, many good research work that gives you an algorithm to find the optimal solution. Got it? So never forget the importance of this one. And here were some examples. And interestingly, I found that uh, this, this example has no single change uh, since I took this course in 1995. <laughs> it seems that the Professor Chong is reusing his lecture note again and again uh, during the last 20 years. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's quite open. Uh, frequently happens, uh, especially the course is very fundamental. Anyway. This problem, uh, I believe you are quite familiar with. Because uh, in your uh, freshman physics lab, probably uh, when you learned Ohm's law, probably you did some experiments like measuring the voltage and current pairs, and then put these dots and try to find the straight line that uh, crosses the origin, and blah, 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 right? I also had the same experience. The problem was that my TA said that I have to find some straight line that minimizes the squared difference of this height. And I said, why? Okay. He said that, he told me that the, we want to find a straight line that is as close as possible to these points. So I said that uh, if I have a, a straight line here, probably this distance must be minimized. And he really hated me. <laughs> and uh, when I 
became a graduate student, I found that uh, I was right. Okay? Because uh, there is no single optimality criteria in line fitting. Okay? He just adopted what? He just adopted least squares optimization technique. In that case, we have a so-called model function, and uh, if uh, the straight line does not uh, cross every point, then we have some error. Of, uh, then the model function value is minimized. That is least squares. But anyway, so now this is also so this uh, linear regression is also a typical optimization problem where we want to find. Uh, two parameters, slope and uh, abscissa. Another one, so here, see that? Here our uh, pair of uh, ti and yi are given and we want to find c and m. Okay. So here minimize over m comma c. Or you may put them in a two-dimensional vector x. right? So x1 is m, x2 is c. You want to find this. Okay. Another example is like this, and uh, I still do not understand why this is formulated this way. But anyway, the idea is like this. Here you have three batteries, and uh, here are given registers. Okay. And this battery must have 10 volts uh, voltage drop, 620. And probably due to the uh, the uh, ohm ohm heat or uh, uh, resistive heating here, uh, the current has maximum value. For example, okay. Now uh, the objective in this example is to maximize the power delivery. So uh, this current I two times ten, I four times six and I5 times 20 uh, must be summed and this value is maximized. Okay, so far okay. But I really hate this uh, constraint set described by these uh, two equalities and uh, these inequalities. Actually from this table uh, you, you have these things, right? The uh, upper limits and lower limits say this, right? And from the uh, Kirchhoff's law, the current does not disappear, so I1 must be the sum of I2 and I3. Uh, I3 must be the sum of I4 and I5. So you have two, two equalities. The problem is that uh, I could not find anything related to this 30 volts. Okay, so something's wrong, okay? Right? Probably uh, what I have to have is that this 30 equals the voltage drop here and voltage drop here and some of this. Okay. So it seems that this problem formulation is 40. <laughs> but anyway, okay. I, I, I need to talk to him. <laughs> anyway, so there was another. Uh, by the way, uh, this problem is, as you see that, this objective function is a linear function, and these are all linear equalities and inequalities. So this is uh, a typical linear programming problem. And I found the single difference of this uh, lecture note from mine. I still have that 1995, actually 1996 spring semester's lecture note when I took this one, and I compared line by line, and this is different. So when, when he gave me the 96 version of the lecture note, he said that the use simplex I would, period. But I found that he added this, or interior point I would. By the way, interior point uh, algorithms are uh, getting a lot more attention these days, because as I told you, numerical solutions are very important now. So if you take convex optimization course, I told you your next course related to this one is the convex optimization uh, by Stephen Boyd. Okay, 
Okay, you study that. Okay. And you will see, especially in the context optimization tool, he talks a lot about interior point methods. Okay. Because it has become very important. Okay. In 1996, in the introductory course, uh, this one was not taught. But now, even in, in, even in introductory course, this interior point algorithm, actually set of algorithms, interior point methods, appear. At least its name. Okay. So pay attention to this. Okay. Of course, the uh, simplex algorithm is much more important. Here was another example. Savings in bank. So it's like this. You have, for example, thousand dollars. Now you want to. Uh, now you can deposit some of the money uh, at the first day of the month from next month. So in the uh, March first, you can deposit some of your debt thousand dollars. In the April first, another, and you do. And after, uh, let me see. Yeah, after n month you receive the, uh, your original uh, deposited money and your interest. But here the assumption is that your uh, interest uh, is in the compound sense. What does that mean? In Korea, we have dangni that is simple, and here bongni means com compound. Okay? So that's why you have here, you see, uh, 1 plus r times some money. Why? 1 means your original deposit, and R, that may be 0 0.01 when your interest rate per month is 1%. Okay? And since you have many, many months, you have this uh, raised to the power of something. Okay? Now the question is this. So after uh, 10 months, so uh, at the end of this year, you want to receive the money. And you, what you want to do is that you want to maximize that money. And we assume that our interest rate is fixed. Now, what is your best choice of the first month's deposit, second month's deposit, and tenth month's deposit? And our intuition says that deposit every money in the first day, right? So actually, even though this problem, so this is the objective, right? You see the the first month's deposit have what? Raised to the power of 10. Second month's 9. Last month's 1, right? And your sum must be less than or equal to $1,000, and each one must be greater than 0, right? And if you give this optimization problem to a, uh, an undergraduate student and does not explain the meaning, probably he or she would say that, hmm, it looks very difficult. However, as far as we know the story, we know the implication or situation of what, how this uh, problem is formulated, we instantly know that what is the optimal solution? The deposit everything. So x1 equals d and all the others are zero. That is the solution. Sometimes it's very interesting that you slightly transform uh, the problem. Actually, you just relabel or uh, you just scale and uh, change the variable and make a new interpretation, your solution just becomes obvious. In the next semester, some of you will take my estimation theory course, where there appears uh, some problems related to Neiman Pearson detectors. And initially, the problems is formulated, of course, an optimization problem. Looks very difficult to solve. But after some change of variables, you find that, that problem is similar to something like this. Suppose you have total $1,000. Now you have 10 banks with different interest rates. Now, first, which bank do you want to put money? How amount? Probably your answer is obvious. You choose the bank that gives you the highest interest rate. Okay? That is too easy. Second one. Now, the, each bank has upper limit on your deposit. Now, what do you do? Still obvious. You find the bank that gives you the highest interest rate, and if that bank allows you to deposit $100, you, you put $100. Okay? 
you move to the next one. Fifty dollars. Put fifty dollars. That way you can maximize. Okay. But uh, you will see in the semester that the problem I mentioned at the first place is formidable. It, it seems impossible to even have a, a very uh, simple algorithmic solution, but actually it has. Okay. So. Sometimes the trick is that uh, some optimization problem looks very complicated but have a very simple solution. And some optimization problems looks very easy <laughs> but does not have a closed form solution. Anyway, this is uh, uh, the case with easy solution. Now, uh, as I told you, the optimization is also very, very important in control theory. The slope design is also control theory, right? And also, uh, there are many calculus of variations problems. For example, uh, when I uh, have read some uh, textbook on calculus of variations, the, in the first chapter, they put some examples. The story is like this. So, uh, this is an airport. And you are a pilot. You arrive at the uh, airport too early. So, you are asked to rotate around the, uh, the airport. Now, uh, you are given the height. So what you can choose is what? Just the, uh, the shape of your, uh, your how to say, rotation, kind of. The problem is that uh, you do not want to be too far away so that whenever you are uh, allowed to land, you want to land. The problem is that there is a wind. <laughs> okay? Then what is the optimal uh, shape of your uh, flight to minimize the, uh, uh, minimize the consumption of the fuel and at the same time you have some constraint that your airplane does not far off uh, from the airport, something like that. Okay? So optimization is very important in control. Okay? Anyway, this is one of the simple, simplest problems you've already seen. It's an inverted pendulum. Okay, we assume that this, this pendulum only can move with this one dimensional space. What you do is that the here, you want to move the cart given a position in one second and balance the pendulum. Okay. It's like, uh, suppose my hand is this uh, car, okay, and this is the pendulum. Okay. I want to move from here to there okay, within one second, or tens, let's say 10 seconds then I may move this way, right? Or I may move this way. There are many different paths, right? Probably that can be described by the position of my hand as a function of t. Now, among many feasible solutions, what do we want to do? Possibly, we may want to find the movement that minimizes the energy, total energy applied to this uh, motion, okay? yeah, something like that. Okay. So there are many uh, problems possible and appear in, for example, uh, the simple linear regression and battery charger design and uh, investment planning or financial planning and optimal control. Of course, you will see in the next semester in uh, 645 what the estimation problems and detection problems, a lot of problems. You have to remember this today. In the next semester, you will see a lot of very beautiful estimation detection problems in the sense that closed form or closed algorithmic form of solution exists. But never forget, the world is not beautiful uh, as those problems. In most of cases, probably you have to develop numerical, especially iterative algorithms that just find a good enough solution. Okay? Okay, so uh, we have covered this one and I talked about that one already. And now, uh, time's almost up, so let me be uh, quick uh, for what we are going to do. So, probably uh, you have to do some homework uh, not by solving uh, the problems. Okay? We haven't yet uh, uploaded, but the homework is like this. Okay? Very, very, very heavy study chapters. Uh, 
uh, 2, 2, 2, 2, 5. <laughs> Why? Because, by the way, do you have textbooks? Chapter 2 to 5 are just preliminaries, mathematical reviews. Chapter 2 is about vector spaces and matrices. Chapter 3 is about transformations. Uh, chapter 4 is concepts from geometry. So these three chapters are all related to what? Linear algebra. Okay. And then, And chapter 5 is elements of calculus. That is all about multivariate calculus. So please study that okay? carefully. Okay? And uh, next Monday, I will finish uh, this review in just 1 hour 15 minutes. Okay? So <laughs> during the weekend, uh, study very hard. By the way, uh, if you want to or have a better uh, material for this uh, concept of optimization, uh, let me give you a suggestion. Uh, read first two pages of chapter 6. From chapter 6, we start our study of optimization problems. And first the two pages talks about this decision parameters, objective functions, and constraint set. And that will really, really help you. Okay? If you haven't satisfied uh, with my uh, lecture. Okay? Anyway, written materials have better organization. Okay? So you may appreciate uh, this uh, textbook. Okay? So I think I'm done today. Okay? That's all for the day.